Today I want to address a subject that keeps coming up. It's something people always ask me in different contexts. So one is the classic that I hear almost every day. Curtis, why don't you do aquaponics? Curtis, why don't you do hydroponics? Curtis, what do you think about vertical indoor growing with blah, 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 all this kind of stuff. And the, the, the grander subject that I want to address with this is a high technology versus appropriate technology. When is technology beneficial to you know, a productive end and when is it a burden? And I would make the case that most of the high technology that we see in agriculture right now, at least in small scale agriculture, I'm not talking about large scale industrial ag, I'm talking about small scale ag. Most of this high technology that we're seeing right now is, in my opinion, a burden. It's not really that necessary. Its costs probably outweigh the benefits. One example is this new shipping container hydroponic growing system called Freight Farms. And it's a really cool idea because it's, you know, pack all these vertical growing towers in these shipping containers and you can put these things anywhere. You can stack them. It's a great idea. I think it's fantastic. However, where does the cost outweigh the benefit? And your context is so important to understand with these kinds of things. So if you live in an area where you have available soil, okay, so you've got, you know, you're not living in the Arctic tundra, you're not living in Saudi Arabia, in the desert, you're not living in a high density urban, far, urban area like Singapore or Tokyo or maybe parts of New York City, but even then, you can grow outside of the city with, with very little transport. The point I'm trying to make here is that what's the point of this shipping container if you have soil to grow in? People always have a tendency to just get so attracted to the newest, coolest thing, and I'm guilty of that myself, there's no doubt about it. And I'm not trying to discredit this organization and what they're doing, because I think it is a fantastic idea. I just think that there's very little context I can think of besides the one I just mentioned that really makes sense. You know, there are some really high density urban areas where there's no good soil, so I get that. However, if you really break down the costs, what is the cost, even with gas prices as they are today, why is it so bad to drive food in from 50 miles away if you have good agricultural soil there? and then you can have a better farm with a better lifestyle. What's wrong with transporting it into the city in that regard? So of course I understand the greater picture that you know it might get to a point where that isn't so much of a sustainable model anymore and it's partly why I'm an urban farmer. But when you look at this, this freight farms thing, uh, for example, these units cost $80,000 a piece. And I forget all the exact numbers, but I think they, pr they can produce about $20,000 a product or something like that a year. Um, don't quote me on that, but it was something like there. So wh wh what's really the point? $80,000 of upfront cost to produce $20,000 a product. Okay, so if you had were able to grow and sell all that product, let's just use that as the number. It could, it could be slightly wrong, but let's just use it for example. It would take four years to amortize that, that purchase. You can start an urban farm in soil on $5,000 and make the same amount of money and you'd amortize it immediately. You know, it, it's, I, I don't understand the, the point. I mean, I get it that it's really neat, you can stack it. I get all the really cool technical things about it. But when you really break down, what is your end goal? Well, your end goal is to produce food to sell, to get to people. And if that's your end goal, why do you need all this fancy technology to do it? It's something that I'm always seeing, you know, all, all these fancy drawings from university academics and architects that make all these cool looking green buildings that are going to be the future of urban agriculture. I get it and I think it's very possible that that's what it will look like at some point. But how do we get there and how long is it going to take to get there? Because the, the demand or the need for that has to be so great that we've exhausted all of the other ways that we can produce food. And you guys, the soil is still good. The soil is there for us to grow things in. 
And there's also something that isn't talked about often when we're talking about hydroponics or aquaponics and even vermaponics is the nutrients that come in this in this um, produce that's grown in these systems does not have all the micronutrients that exist in soil. They haven't figured that out yet. I'm not saying that they won't, but the, the, the quality of the product itself is just simply not as nutritionally dense, and it might be in, in the near future. I'm not saying that it can't be. It certainly might be, but right now it's not, and I've talked to chefs many times that have bought hydroponic or aquaponic produce and they say the flavor isn't there, the shelf life isn't there. So in, in my opinion from what I've seen right now there's, there's no comparison on the product and the costs greatly outweigh the benefits. So in, in my opinion if you're going to think about farming and you have access to soil, grow in the soil it's so much easier. It's so much cheaper to set up. You know, having said all that, I think there is a lot of validity to these high-tech growing methods. I'm certainly not trying to discredit them. But look at your context, look at what's practical, and do a cost-benefit analysis based on that. I hope that helps. If you guys want to see more stuff like this, please hit the subscribe button right now. Check out my website for all of my upcoming workshops. I've got three workshops I'm teaching in Kelowna, BC on my farm. June, July, and August. There's still space available. Early bird tickets end March, April, and May for the June, July, and August workshop. And I'd love to see you guys there. Talk to you later.